I'd say, yeah. but, but unfortunately for them, they suddenly found themselves on the back end of some really informed teams. Well, for me as well, Group A, uh, sorry, Group B was one of those that was so mixed in terms of play style. You've got Moscow 5, which, you know, no one really yeah. knows, uh, apart from Moscow 5, what they're going to bring out. You've got Ehome, the Chinese team, which unfortunately didn't really make their mark on the group. They did manage to get the uh, one win right at the end there Over against Curse. Curse. Yeah. Um, you've got Cypher, who, you know, they had this massive lineup change before the event, and no one really knew what to expect from them. You've got TSM in there. You've got Curse, who had the, the drama of themselves, of their own lineup, having yep. to bring in uh, a last-minute replacement and then doing so well, unfortunately, uh, for them losing out Could against CLG in the quarterfinal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Could have done with him today by the looks of things. So here we go then. SK versus against all authority. Quarter-final winner will be going through to meet none other than Team Dignitas. So we, uh, I made that very dramatic entrance, but actually we're going to have a regame. Yeah, we are going to have a regame. <laughs> so uh, something went up and they've all left the game. So we are going to be left to talk again. So, I mean, let's look about it. Against all authorities versus SK. They've fought quite a few times online. Um, I'd say against all authorities, I think, are probably the favorites. I think they've come out on top more often. Um, I would say... I, I would give it to against all authorities, you know, being favourites. But like I say, SK have played very well. They're four-one-zero in the group. The only team they lost to have looked like the ones that are going to reach the finals. I've no idea how Moscow Five CLG is going to go. CLG are going to have to change their game for Moscow Five. I think because, so as well. Because CLG throughout this tournament have pretty much farmed. Uh, there's, there's no way about it. Every game I've watched, they have sat and farm. It's been very passive from them. Moscow 5 are the complete polar opposite. They are in your face. Ehom discovered this with a three-man tower dive at level two. Standard <laughs> stuff. Yeah, but like you say, CLG, I think the right word you could say there is static, actually. Um, you didn't get in the game, right? No. And they've already started again. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I am not in there, yeah. <laughs> so we wait for someone else for the last game, regame, and uh, Demon actually didn't get in this time either. We will, we will coordinate this at some point in the near future. Uh, I'm sure the admins will get them to uh, regame. They were already picked in there and getting going. <laughs> So give me a chance to well, refresh What do you, what the do you think to some of these players? I mean, you look, uh, you mentioned uh, Dedrian, who actually this is his first major yeah. tournament. And this stage is a little bit scary, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, actually, I wouldn't play on there. I'd be too scared. Uh, you know, we've got <laughs> a massive, massive audience here. Uh, look at that. He's just ruined it with a sticker. I know. Oh, nice really? of you. Nice of you, We my get friend. these nice little clean things. I'm going to get in there I'm while I'm going to get in there uh, before they start, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like you say, Oslo, actually, I spoke to him on the first day. He came in uh, towards the end of uh, Group A uh, to, to give the drain a little bit of experience to see come in. And he was a little, Oslo was actually a little bit worried. So, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know how he's going to react. Nobody knows how they're going to react when you come in and see all these people, this massive stage. You're like, what are you going to do? But he was excited. That was the thing. There, so, which immediately he was like, wow, OK, now I'm confident because... My jungler's excited. My mid lane, you can see he's actually next to Ocelot uh, in between the jungler and uh, the top laner. So they, they're all excited. Very focused faces there as well. And SK, even the very first game against Cypher, they were like, we did a perfect game, 9-0. Yeah. Uh, it was a long game, but they said it was a perfect game. It says everything's good and we're feeling confident. So SK coming into this one, probably the most confident I've ever seen them, I think. Like you said, we, you know, SK, they were, they were a bit unsure. Uh, Kiev um, in New York, they actually looked really good in New York. But unfortunately for them, they came up against a brick wall, which was Fnatic at the time. And Fnatic at this tournament were looking incredible. They went 2-0 and oh, and then they lost every game afterwards. But they were immediately looking good. But... It's the most confident I've seen. However, against all authorities are in the same position. They should, in my opinion, have topped the group. But they got stomped by Dignitas, which is going to be a worry for them because it is Dignitas in the semi-finals. So it may yeah. play in the back of their minds. It's like, well, even if we beat SK, we've got to come up against Dignitas again. We really struggled with, and it wasn't even close. It was like 24-7. It was a very big, uh, very big beat, defeat there for them. But against all authorities, you know what? They're a fairly new team as well. We've got N-rated as the support that's come into it obviously replaced those have 22 after Kiev 
Uh, Moma's also come in and replaced Alfor, and they have been solid, solid replacements. They have really gelled well. So has has always been a fantastic top. Uh, Yellow, yeah. Pete, Yellow Star has always been a fantastic uh, bottom line. Nearly called him Yellow Pete, and CLG would be happy <laughs> with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and Linac, of course, has been has been the stable diet in the jungle lately. So they are. You can see on their screens. You can just about make out they're loading in there. So we're going to be going into the game shortly. But Joe, okay, it's pretty on the line. Actually, in Cologne, here in yeah. Germany, at the SK offices, they weren't streaming throughout that boot camp, and uh, they weren't giving anything away, and no. I think that they gives them a in. real edge. Um, I think that they could possibly come out with something uh, a little bit special here. And um, we've seen from them, they've been solid. As you mentioned earlier on in the tournament, they were commenting on the fact that they were running perfect games. And that's the position that you need to be in coming into a match like this to really have the edge. Yeah, I completely agree, and I think SK could take this one. We're going to go into the game, guys. You're ready for an awesome quarterfinals. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give you a quick roster rundown of the teams. It's been a while since the picks and bands, or Big Ben, as our camera crew likes to call it. I'm That's a story sure. for between the games, I think. <laughs> that is definitely a story for between the games. We'll come back to that one, because we may see our very first level one team fight here. Just catching a glimpse, and Ocelot's actually going to catch our yellow star and back away straight away from there. So we could see an invade from against our authorities, and rightly so, they have Munda. They have a pretty strong level one team. They're going to go pushing forward. Ocelot's going to have to back away from this one. Will we see them go and take that blue away, or will they just step away the rest of sk aren't actually close by so let's give you a uh, quick rundown of the teams while they are going to step back for sk it is going to be nif candy panda dedre and kevin and ocelot they are going to be on sona and, Ka and Os uh, ocelot where that came from i don't know so <laughs> sona and cogmore down the bottom lane dedre will be in the jungle on lee sin kevin meanwhile you can see will be on uh, shivana and ocelot will be on galio in the middle there meanwhile for against all authority it's going to be a mundo in the jungle and that's actually something the american teams have been playing a lot so they maybe pick that up from them so as will be at the top on wukong meanwhile leona and the uh, corky down the bottom that's going to be an interesting lane straight away i'm not too sure how that one's going to work out leona is one of those supports can be hit or miss and in the middle it will be moma on Carthus. on Carthus, yeah what what do you think to this middle na uh, middle lane obviously uh, galio he is for an ap carry naturally tanky very and he can continue he can really farm well how is that going to play out against moma on Carthus? do you think uh, is that a case of moma's going to need some early level ganks to actually get a, a big advantage moving in that middle lane yeah possibly and Carthus obviously is low hit point hero to start with yeah. so i would look towards leasing possibly trying to get the ganks early on to him also like will be harassing he went very heavy, aggressive on uh, reginald as, as cassiopeia and they're a similar sort of hit point hero so i'd expect to see leasing going for pretty early ganks and as it is at the moment i'm just looking down the bottom there uh, apologies if you did just see the me pulling the map scroll speed down it was very quick and i don't like you guys to get seasick as i uh, try and do this you can see to drain is setting himself up very early on here and if he's going to try and bait it in towards the bush here and he's hoping that n rated is actually going to go towards uh -huh. it he's put a ward straight in his face which means they're going to back straight away from that one and the q has missed as well from the drain so they're going to back off but yellow star was taken pretty low by candy panda already there yeah nicely done actually that ward Possibly saving them, just judging by how yellow star, how low yellow star went in that little exchange. Candy Panda obviously kept his focus directly in there. Uh, but this is a battle between the top two AD carries so far in the tournament. Meanwhile, we are seeing the aggressive, aggressive jungle from against all authority. Linak is in there with Mundo. He's going to be trying to steal away this blue buff. And when I say trying, he is going to take that one. He's actually got no one to stop him in there. We'll leave. He uh, one small golem, and that is going to be very, very annoying. That's going to set Lee Sin back, actually, um, quite a long way at this early level. It will do, and he's not really in the position to counter it. You can see Claire Voins has gone down. It's like, ah, their blue's still up. This might be a problem. I think we've just lost our blue, and Dredrain's going to come around that corner and find just two little lizards as he cues towards it and says, oh, dear, this is not going to go well. So that means Moma 
probably is going to pick up the blue early on, which is ideal for Carthus. It's going to give him so much help down the bottom. You can see the poke continuing to come out. Power core just hitting on towards N rated there. So Niff and Candy Panda really trying to lay on the pressure down the bottom there. Meanwhile, at the top, you can see Kevin has been pushed heavily to his tower. And so as is going to go back and buy. So his first trip back, he's going to pick up a Doran's Blade there to go and a ward just to cover off and four health pots. Very tanky straight away. And Mama will pick up the blue. So that is immediately going to put SK on the back foot. And that's what they were looking for. We mentioned in this early game, Roma probably going to need a fair bit of help in and amongst his middle lane. And, well, he's managed to get that blue buff early on, which gives him that spam ability, gives him that extra sustainability against Ocelot. And if we look at the uh, early CS, actually, from that middle lane, we can see 29 to 29. So very, very even. You could probably, possibly expect MoMA to edge slightly ahead with that one. Meanwhile, up on top lane, we've actually got a bit of damage coming in onto Kevin. Obviously, uh, Shivana versus Wukong. Wukong has, as Demon mentioned, been back. The uh, Doran's Blade already up there. So he's going to be uh, doing that little bit of extra damage as well, should he decide to get aggressive and possibly get a gank soon from Mundo because he's on the top side of their jungle. Yeah, down the bottom we're seeing a, a CS advantage already for Corkies. I'm on about 10 CS in my head. What I mean by CS is creep score, so it's all about getting the last hits on these creeps in front of you. And for anyone, obviously, a regular viewers have been going, well, that's, that's pretty obvious, but we are here in a big trade show. There is a massive crowd of people that maybe wouldn't even seen League of Legends before, so they're probably unaware of exactly how it works. It's simply three lanes, and the minions are auto-pushing up there. I'm just keeping my eye on here at the top here, because you can see Lenak is lingering. Meanwhile, also, Lee Sin's going to come in. This could work out in there favor though Kevin is ready for this one he's going to try and dive it towards Soas I'm not too sure they have the damage they're going to go towards Linak Linak has got the ignite on him Dedrain meanwhile he's going to go back and forth he will pick up the first blood the ulti coming out from Carthus Dedrain's going to back away from this one will Soas have enough to finish him off he's going to try and get the last hit he will and that is a traded blow there oh. and well very nicely done a 2-1 exchange and against all authorities coming out very well and that is just going to feed Soas so badly a 2-0 to Soas on Wukong is going to be a horrible horrible thing for Shivana to face. Yeah, the monkey getting fed early on, and we talked about this uh, little stat, which obviously d isn't the end of the world, but the only game that SK lost of, uh, uh, have lost so Got far the is the only game that Kevin's actually died, and Moma is going to be stealing away those wraiths as well. Actually, uh, Oh, Candy Panda's just now. about hanging on down the bottom Whoa. there. The Ignite's running around out. Ocelot was also taken down very low. So while that happened, it was like a full-on lane push on every single lane. They nearly picked up a full-on ace this early on, which would have been pretty crazy. So Kevin is... Well, he's, he's up against it at the top here. I mean, 38 CS to 50, uh, 44. And now you can see triple Doran's wow. Blade on Wukong already, only six minutes into this game. That is not good. Then those Wraiths have been taken away by Linux. They started to be taken away by Moma. Now Linux just finished the job. And you know what? I think we might even see some crazy early Dragon play from against all authority here. And <laughs> no, Chopper coming straight <laughs> through, catching to Drain. Bottom lane continuing being pushed as well. Corky is uh, 49 CS to 37. So they're keeping that 10 CS advantage down the bottom lane. Yeah, 10 CS advantage, and uh, yeah, up top we are going to see. I mean, so as why not? He's now been, uh, he's got those first two kills, including the first blood in there. Going to continue to, uh, you know, try his luck with this and really force Kevin to have a hard time. There's lots of pings going down around that middle area as well. Ocelot just being spotted. That ward is down from against all authority, but he has one also in that brush. In wow. terms of uh, the CS now, up at the top, 43 to 48 so it remains a little bit more close uh, a little bit close but, but so as is going to be a constant harass now yeah and the big important thing is so as is actually keeping him completely away from the CS. you can see kevin can't get near it every time he comes near so as is in his face and he's immediately diving on him again pops his ulti this time he is a level ahead and you can see kevin's gonna have to go away from this one had wow. to use his ulti just about got in time to pop away from that one so as completely zoning him out there and this is really going in favor of against all authorities they have probably the best start they could hope for you can see corky down the bottom has that triple Doran's blade now return into lane double Doran's. meanwhile for candy panda so Falling behind in every lane is not a very good start. Yeah, real good stuff so far to this point from against all authority. We do have uh, Candy Panda up at level six now. Yellow start shouldn't be too far behind. I think one more uh, bit of experience here in this bottom lane and she'll ding up to level six. Yep, there we go. So uh, ulti ready on Corky as well. Those bombs going to assist him a little bit more. Meanwhile, in middle lane, in terms of CS, 64 
to 85. And, you know, that's one thing, the uh, the actual early damage that was put onto Ocelot to force him to go home, plus combined with the fact that Mom uh, got the blue buff early on, he's taken rates, I think, two or three times away from his opponent's jungle, actually, as well. That's giving Momo a real nice advantage in this middle area. It has, and you can see, actually, that maybe setting up for a dragon here. Linux has pulled it out, but I don't think he's going to go for it just yet. He's uh, going to back away because they realize Blue Buff will be up shortly. And they're actually wondering whether they're going to go across and maybe try and harass them for it. Oslo actually went across there with the Drayon, and they were like, they, they didn't know the timings on when the blue was there. So they went to look for it and it wasn't available. And now they're actually looking at maybe countering and trying to steal one of their own. They can catch Momo coming across. Oh, the cube completely missing Momo there. The Drayon, wow, well, maybe we're seeing a little sign of nerves there because he was way off with that, and Momo was just walking straight towards him. Yeah, it was a mile off. And he, Momo, you know, didn't even know he was there. We are going to see that blue buff going over again. And, you know, blue buff is now up over on the other side as well. We'll see if he gets authority go anywhere over there. Actually, a ward down just outside Dragon. That's going to be a waste of cash because there's a pink ward down from against all authority. The uh, ward will be cleared out. Blue buff, as I said, is up. We'll see if that goes over onto Ocelot, who does have the chalice built up at this point of the game. Meanwhile, down at bottom, against Authority, half push, and it's going to allow Mundo to get in at the back side of this brush. They need to uh, wait a little bit. Actually, they're going to start diving oh, wow. in there and absolutely exploded his Nif. That, that was a real quick one. Actually, Linak didn't even need to get involved there. <laughs> no, that was just incredible. He just popped there and then, and that's going to give them the dragon. Surely, Dedrain's going to come around and maybe try and contest it, but I'm not too sure if it's really contestable at all. He's going to maybe try and come in. He's got to, he's got to place himself a ward or something to back away from. He's going to use Candy Panda instead as a back away. You can see he's trying to get that Q in to zip in, maybe get the smite on him and then back out. Ocelot is in there as well. Are they going to be able to get in the steal? I don't think they did, though. Now they're going to get caught out. The Drain's going to have to use his ulti kick on Enrated to back away from that one. And wow, this is looking very big, much in Mama's favor. Mama's favor against all authorities favor. Oh, I'm just keeping my eye on Wukong coming around the side. He's going to go straight towards Soaz. He's actually going to use his mirror there to try and get around. He wanted to jump onto the Drain. And Ocelot was a little bit concerned about Wukong here because this is a very, very fed Wukong. You can see he's picked up that longsword as well. Maybe going too aggressive, but he's going to try and finish off Ocelot. Ocelot's had to use his flash. Would you believe in a four on one? He's forced him to use the flash to cut the salt. He's going to come out. Oh, completely juked him there with that flash. And Ocelot will survive. And wow, Soaz is just so strong right now. They may give up that top tower. Yes, they will. Kevin will be able to pick that top tower up. So that's going to be a little bit of a saving grace for SK. That will try and keep the gold in check a little bit. But Kevin is going to have to really work hard here to try and keep up with Soaz. That was such great play, actually, from Soaz. Moving in there, he uses Mirror to you know, get right in there in the pack. Did a load of damage to Ocelot. Actually used his ulti as well to get himself a little bit further away. Knock all the SK players up in the air, then flashed out of it. Unfortunately for them, it was just too, just a little bit too many HP uh, left on Ocelot, so the Carthus ulti couldn't quite finish things off. Actually, uh, we will see Clairvoyance has been used. Actually, that was by Nif to uh, take a peek over towards their own blue buff. Will we see Mundo head down there once again? We saw him steal the first one very early on in the game. It looks like this time Ocelot will have a blue buff to play with. Momo's blue buff has actually uh, run out since the last time they picked it up. Meanwhile, down at bottom, you can see the yellow star generated pushing this lane nicely. And the thing is, they've got a lot more damage in that bottom lane than SK. And that's something that Candy Panda and, well, maybe even Nif in particular, we saw how fast he was popped for that kill earlier on. They have to be very careful. And here we go. We are going to see them dive straight in there as if by magic. And Candy Panda goes very, very low. Dedrain is in there. Enraged and could be the one getting caught out. And he's surely going to be taken out by Dedrain. He will be. Yellow Star not able to get anything. And, well, he uses the Valkyrie to get away, but at least in, at least in sticking to him. Yellow Star will get back to the comfort of his tower. And Ocelot, I'll tell you what, coming straight in. They're going to try and dive in, possibly, here for Yellow Star, who uh, that's not going to work out perfectly. Ocelot will decide to ulti Linak going fairly low as well. And they need to be real careful because these minions are coming in as well. If they decide to push, no, well, they're not going to decide to push. 
Pedrion is still fairly high HP, which surprises me that they didn't continue to push there. Yeah, they could have, and they, they, I think also you kind of use his ulti a little bit too early. They're going to lose out on the tower up the top there. Sars is going to lay down a chunk of damage. I think they were just so scared of Mama's ulti right now. Mama hasn't has been back, and look at that. I just look at him a minute ago. He just got the catalyst now straight towards Rod of the Protectors. So immediately, uh, Rod of the Ages, sorry, Rod of the Protectors. I don't know where they pulled that one from. Linak is getting caught again there, but you can see Enrated is back. But just check out that damage. How quick was Cogmore going down there? Once he got caught out, he was nearly popped instantly. That is going to be a very scary thing for him. And Candy Pan has got to be so, so cautious of that. You can already see Enrated just hovering it around, waiting for his uh, AD carry to come back. Corky is coming back down the lane. So now with a Sheen as well. It's going to be popping that damage out. Candy Panda is going to port back. What's he going to go and buy? It's going to be a uh, Madras Razor actually going for. So possibly building up to a blood raise and no it wriggles he'll be uh, so he's just gonna be pushing on towards that bottom lane they I think they're gonna lose this bottom tower before they return to this lane candy panda sorry corky will continue to hammer away they're gonna probably back away one last time and there is the tower so that is gonna be all square in towers but of course it is clearly against the authorities in the uh, in the driving seat at the moment yeah, and three two in kills in favor of against the authority the two that have come over for SK have both gone into Lee Sin Dedrian. You definitely can't fault him for that one, but you know, Shivana already gone down. Not such a big, big deal. Uh, but Galio uh, Oslo obviously has yet to really be involved there. No assists, no kills, albeit no deaths as well. Only one assist from MoMA. Let's see what they go for here. Actually, we could see a bit of action down at the bottom. They are going to dive in onto Candy Panda again. Nif has to use that ulti to get away. Valkyrie used, and it's going to be enough to finish off Nif. The ulti came in from Karthus as well, and it was the Karthus ulti that got the kill. Candy Panda needs to be uh, a little bit careful. Actually, he's got Kevin and Dedrian just to the top there. They were doing the golems. But again, against all authority, showing how, you know, Leona... Oh, not quite the classic support, but certainly can uh, get those kills very, very quickly. He can do, and it's like the Alistair style, you know, once yeah. he's gone, he's just going to bounce you, do a lot of damage, and in, in cohesion with uh, Momo on his ulti as well, it's just popping them very, very quickly, and he's going to be happy to be, be fed up there, because obviously a very a fed car, this is a dangerous thing, and just look at the CS difference, you can see 173 CS to 140 for uh, Galio, well, 139 if you want to be precise, but he's already pulling quite an advantage, 101 as well, Galio has not been able to pick anything up and against all authorities just completely driving forward obviously so has now up to that brutalizer that he was building towards earlier on he's looking very very strong in comparison 129 cs to 117 so he's got a, uh, a 10 cs advantage Javan are actually trying his best to pull back into this one but they are lacking a little bit of crowd control here they have got the galio ulti and they need to be in position to plant and get a lot of that damage down from candy panda but he's just being caught out by leona every time there you go walking straight into a cleaver in the face they are buying them time to continue pushing on the tower here but i got to be careful that Candy Panda, if he gets caught, he will be dead instantly. Yeah, it needs to be real careful. Actually, we can see that kind of moving as a group up there. Kevin just running through a wall of paint. Won't be uh, too much of a hindrance with him when he's got burnt out, though. And uh, literally just waltz away from that one. And SKR forced away from that middle turret after taking it down to around about two-thirds of its HP. Dragon is available. Obviously, one dragon has already gone over to against all authority. And they are surely going to be trying to pull this one out. Yellow Star is the man right at the front. Just trying to get that poke damage out into SK as they come in there. There is a ward in that uh, brush as well as Enrated did get himself in. They are going to dive in. Oslo already going down to around about half HP. Against all authority, though, losing Enrated in the middle of it. It looks like Soaz will die as well. They still have Cogmore running in there as well. And Kevin versus Yellow Star. I'm not sure that Kevin's going to escape from this one. He won't. It's Yellow Star that gets the kill. But look at Momma. He's got an ignite on him. And he will be finished off by Nif of all people. Here comes the ulti. Is he going to get the kill? No, not quite. Press the Q. Yes. Yeah. Oh, straight towards the tower. Yeah. It's like you've landed it. Press it. Follow it up. <laughs> wow, pretty crazy stuff. So 7-7. Seven, seven, a pretty strange engage there. Unfortunately for uh, SK, Nif actually picked up a couple of kill there. And Along with a bunch of assists, so but you know, you can see Lee Sin 4 2 2 wasn't really the right people they wanted to get the kills, though. Common where you can see didn't pick anything up there, did get four assists, so but that was a pretty crazy exchange, and you can see the power.
that Shivana has. When that ulti is used in the right place at the right time, we managed to get across those weaker hit point heroes and immediately cause problems. And again, we mentioned it before, they were split up. Momo was stuck out here while the rest of the team were all down here. And yet, they managed to get the Wall of Pain out, but he just got immediately split away from his team. We've seen it so many times in these matches. It looks great when you do this fancy pincer move, but it just doesn't always work, especially in the early levels when you're a squishy hero. So it kind of backfired on them. And remember, nobody's picked up that dragon yet. You can see Linek is going to pull it out, but I think SK are going to surely be ready. So I think we're going to see them going straight back in again. They are going to be able to get the damage down. Cogmore down the bottom though, so Cogmore's going to be split away from this one. Candy Panda needs to get involved. You can see the ping going down. Ocelot didn't... Uh, oh, he's going to get caught on actually. Nif is the one, the target. Nif uh, taking out very low. That's immediately going to give a game to all authority a big advantage. Diving on towards the drain. He does not have his ulti available. Beautiful catch by Leona there, but he's actually got away Still with it alive. somehow. I've no idea how they managed to di disappear from that one. Ocelot though did go down as well as Nif. And now finally Cogmore actually catching down Corky down there. Uh, catch it being caught out and that's against all authorities how SK were not set up for that one I don't know surely they realized the fight was going to be straight back in their faces yeah it was a kind of obvious move there and I'm not sure how it all went like that to be honest against all authority kind of split their focus in there at the end as well Dedrin just escaping with very very little HP actually uh, did manage to survive in the end went up into the top side of against all authorities jungle and did portal home but if we look down the kills, Wukong extended himself now to 5-1-1. Corky, 3-1-2 against the 0-2-4 of Cogmore. And, uh, you know, he's got Phage, he's got Sheen, Triple Doran's Blade, Berserker's Greaves are finished. Riggle's Lantern uh, was built up first by Cogmore, as Demon mentioned earlier. Double Doran's Blade, Dagger, plus the Berserker Greaves and the uh, Crit Gloves as well. So, you know... It's not looking good on uh, pretty much all fronts, actually, for uh, SK Gaming here. Yeah, they're going to have to turtle it up a little here. They are only 10-7, though. It is only the one team fight, but that one dragon team fight can be so important. It was very even in the first one. Linak having the cheek to actually start off a Baron now. I think he was just simply taking a peek, but I think it was going to be very adventurous for SK to actually go <laughs> remotely near that. We are 20 minutes in. We did see a pretty early one from CLG earlier on, and I think it was a two-man uh, Baron there. But look at Soaz. He's so, so confident at the moment against Kevin. He's just just feeling he can do anything. He's double buffed up. He's just really laying down the smack on this top lane. And it's just, there's, there's not a lot that Kevin can do, but Kevin has been useful in a team fight when positioned well. Yeah. And he needs Gallio to plant in the right place for Kevin to get across. It's just not working out though. Once they get that team fight, they just need to get the position in sorted out. Ocelot placing the ward down to keep a check on Baron. Yellowstar now with a brilliant spot as well running, has completed that Trinity Four, so he's going to be very strong as well. You can see a Warmox now on the, on, Mundo as well, so Mundo literally is going to go where he pleases, and Ocelot, well, he, he's struggling here. He's got that Abyssal set to complete, but, you know, with the Chalice, he's, he's, in a, he's in a horrible place compared to Carthus, who's 2-1-5, has got that Rabadon's Death Cap, and Rod of Ages already complete. Yeah, bit of a scary situation for SK, but it's still, you know, definitely not a done deal. It can turn itself around, but SK need a good, solid team fight. Um, coming into the next one, we can see the poke from Yellowstar actually taking this middle turret down to less than half HP. Down at bottom, Momo was just having himself a little bit of farm. Candy Panda needs to be careful here. Okay, there are wards down in that brush. And Momo is going to be taking away the golems from that bottom side. SK, by the time they react and start moving down, actually against Authority, are around this red buff. We are going to see Soaz dive in there. Damage coming from Kevin and Dedrian. But I'm not sure that SK should fancy their chances. Actually, Cogmore is in behind, but Valkyrie used by Yellowstar to get away, and against all authority will take the route via that tribush and move back to safety. Clairvoyance was used by Nif as well, just to make sure that you know, everything's kosher, that they weren't setting up some kind of trap inside of that tribush anyway. And it is a trap. They've gone on towards oh. Candy Panda down the bottom, managed to pop the ulti, the ignite as well, and so is going to happily take this one. And that will be the Carthus Hall finishing it off. Very, very well executed there. The rest of the team are back to Wayne. Candy Panda just got caught completely napping up the lane. While this was all happening, Linux happily tanking away on that top turret. He will take it down, taking a big chunk of damage on an ulti from Ocelot. Oh, very nice to exhaust there. That will prevent all the damage coming from that ulti, but I think he might be able to finish him off. He's trying to finish it, but you can see Linux with that ulti run. He's going to get all that life regen, and yeah, 
just walks away from it like a boss. You wouldn't believe he's just got any trouble at all. Mama also taking down that middle turn. Dedrean's got to be careful. He's going to get caught out by N-Rated. They needed to take the turret down, though, because Mama's tanked it up. Suddenly N-Rated. No, you've just no. kicked him out of turret range. I do not believe it. Dedrean using the ulti, hoping he had the damage. But wow, against all authorities, continue. Pick up another tower and walk away. Yeah, Mama currently uh, double buff as well. When he uh, comes back in, actually, uh, Dedrean's going down in the finish. middle. Yeah, Dedrean will get cornered by Soaz. And they, you know, they've given so much to Wukong. He's actually got that frozen Mali already finished. And that's just bad news all around. It's 12 to 7 in the overall score. You know, I've seen a uh, uh, brilliance. Uh, sorry, the uh, Fortitude pot's been picked up here as well by Mundo and by Corky. So I could expect that they are going to be setting up possibly for a Baron sometime in the near future. Do we have an Oracle anywhere in the team? Nope, not just yet. They're going to need that to clear out. There are wards from SK around that Baron area. And they're around about 10k ahead in gold now against All Authority. Dragon should be up fairly soonish as well. And SK are in that horrible position where you've not got much of a choice other than to defend. Absolutely, they're having to passive farm it up here and hope they can catch out a clean Baron fight. That's really SK's big chance at the moment. They have to try and catch out in the right position at the right time. A good crescendo, a good Galli ulti planted down, and they need Kevin to get across. There's a lot of... Uh, a effect that uh, area effect abilities they have but they've just not been able to use them in the right time because they just keep getting caught out candy panda has been caught out a couple of times now by the leona or wukong or diving in on him meanwhile corky has been ripping him apart you can see zero three four he's just not been protected oh, I, actually I can't, that's a bit harsh i can't see he's not been protected he's just been caught in the wrong place at the wrong time yellow star has been doing a fantastic job continue driving forward farming away you can see is that 180 CS to Candy Panda's 154, which is an unusual thing. Candy Panda's normally ahead of most people on it, but Yellow Star has been doing a fantastic job all tournament down that bottom lane. Meanwhile, Leona, you know, sometimes always a questionable support. You never know whether you can get the sustain with him, but, but N-Rated has played a fantastic Leona so far this game. But so has at 612 is so, so strong, and it's looking like they're maybe going to set up for an invade here. They're going to go for the blue buff, and possibly if they can force a team fight, probably go for Baron Joe. Yes, sir. And then we do have now the Oracle on Mundo on Linak. They're going to clear that one, which was uh, actually the last bit of vision that they had anywhere near that barren area. So SK have to stick around at least uh, for a while. Need to figure things out. Wall of Pain does go down. Blue buff is taken away. Actually uh, went to Soaz in the end. And that's going to be one step closer to a possible victory for against all authority. As I mentioned, there is no vision. They've got that clairvoyance. Ward will be dropped in finally, so that SK should know if against all authority start to work over towards that barren area. Actually, we've got MoMA doing uh, Dragon on his own at this, uh, at this point, down in the bottom area. And I don't think there's anyone from against all authority that will uh, even be anywhere near him to stop that happening. No, nope. and Dragon will go there, increasing the gold lead to over 10K now. 42 to 31 and a lot of things going down which means uh, blue buff is going to be taken by moma as well and now against all authority the way they're playing it they've bought those uh, pots there basically taking everything from the jungle that they can they're gearing up here they are gearing up they're just completely driving home their dominance and they're just saying you know what we can which all they're doing at the moment you can see they're just pushing every lane so they're clear moma's clearing that bottom lane pushing it getting the defile he's going to go back and bite probably sitting on a chunk of gold you can see 2200 gold on wukong thousand on Carthus, thousand five hundred on corky they are all just farming it up and they're going to be happily buying immediately as you can see towards building towards the zonia's hourglass already so that's going to be a very very sky, a scary Carthus now right now 492 ability power and he's just going to eat someone alive as soon as he pops out brilliant potion as well if you can add the baron on top as soon as they get near the baron fight you can see they're all ready and waiting they're all starting to buy the potion so he's just going to pop them all and go right let's have a fight let's bring it on ocelot he is struggling he's fight he's trying his best to keep in there he's got 200 ap as well he's, he's looking pretty strong but 
you, yeah, the pin goes down. You can see against the authorities, they are going to pull out the Baron, or pull it out, uh, start the Baron, but they're just trying to see what the reactions of SK are at the moment. They have the ward placement to see if anyone moves towards them. SK tried not to flinch there. They kind of showed the hand, though. They're like, yeah, we know you have uh, wards in and around this area, so they are going to start on the Baron. The Baron down to half already. SK going to have to be quick to get to this one because he's going down very quickly. Baron already picked up, and now SK completely going no man's land. You can see the crescendo going across just about the right time. Also, lot waiting for that uh, ulti to run out. Oh. He's going to try and plant it, but SK is just getting ripped apart all across. Candy Panda, where he's in no man's land, and now he's just getting beaten up in the backside by Linek there. And that was a very, very one-sided fight. <laughs> Ugly is what it was, and there was just no way they could do anything. As soon as Ocelot like, came on, they just planted the exhaust on him and said, go on and plant your ulti. Oh, we're, we're quite happy to sit through this one. Yeah, and the thing about that as well, Moma didn't even have time to get his ulti off before mm. it or in the midst of it. He actually popped it when four guys were already dead. Nif got away from that one, and again, Soul Authority should be able to uh, push now, take down this turret, plus the inhibitor. And well, what have and we the got? Game. Yeah, seven seconds to go. Will they be able to uh, push any further than that? I'm not sure that they'll want no. to. They've got a... Actually, they've not got minions anywhere, but I'm guessing they're just going to tank this one. They've got Mundo, they've got Wukong in there, and they can just tank this uh, bottom turret straight down. Will they want to be taking a fight now? I'm not that sure, to be honest. Ultis are up on the other side. Ocelot's actually isn't up at this point, so that's something that'll be uh, a little bit careful about. Crescendo's not there as well, so I was actually taking damage, and surely we'll get away from this one. Oh, Q just uh, timing out there before it actually connected to Soas. That's great use. And actually, he will dive straight in onto Candy Pandy. Ulti goes across them. Candy surely will die. Dead Dream going very, very low as well. And it's Momo who will take down the Lee Sin. Candy Panda trying to escape this one. Needs a cleaver over from uh, Mundo. Didn't quite work out as intended. But again, that's uh, one for one. Dead Dream goes down. Soas goes down. But so as at 627, won't be too worried about that. He's actually gone in. Oh, here we go. Carthus Ulti. Not getting anything. Um, what was my point? Wukong, yeah, he's got a last whisper built up now to add to his frozen mallet. Plus that brutalizer. And he's just ridiculously scary at this point. Yeah, and 2,000 gold now for Mummy. He's just going to clear this wave, go back and complete that Zonia's hourglass. Really is looking very strong. And against all authorities, they have this game in full, full control. So the question is for SK, what are they going to do? Chances are they are going to lose this game. They need to reset themselves, reset their confidence, because really it was all about that very, very early gank up the top there. You know, a double kill for uh, Wukong. It's just they've not looked back since then. Wukong's just got stronger and stronger. 627. He's been in the right place at the right time. Candy Panda's just been caught out too many times uh, for my liking. There you go. You can see the Zonya's hourglass and a blast in one being completed. Oh, wow. He's got amplifying time as well, so Void Staff possibly coming out uh, shortly for him. They are looking so, so strong. So what is that going to make Momo? Momo's going to be in Chris 708 AP. Wow, that is going to be a, a very painful ulti. And uh, Dredrean, oh, I tell you what, I think Soas fancies this one. He's trying to position himself so he can get in there. Has got that frozen man. It's going to follow in the uh, wave of minions. The drains are already going to back away from that one. Let's have a look towards SK. Will they get caught out? They still need to be very careful. SK still, uh, sorry, against all authorities, still have that Baron buff. There's around about a minute left on it. That's... Uh, they are stealing away the blue buff. They're going to try and catch out Ocelot and chip him down as well. But he's going to have to back away from that one. Wukong is pushing this bottom lane. Remember, he's an open inhibitor. Candy Panda alone, I would not fancy that. You've got to be very no. careful. So as he's so, so strong, he's going to have to back away. But yeah, against all authorities, all they're doing right now is pushing every single lane down in towards the towers. And then they're just going to drive it home and take the win. Yeah, once his top, ta uh, once his top lane, they have the minions moving down. These towers will be uh, the next target actually pinged in there from against all authority. And you can clear these minion waves out pretty much instantly uh, with Carthus, who did take a bit of uh, aggro from the turret. But that is going to go down. You can see SK positioning themselves a little bit wary by the steps up. And Linek just going to use the poke of that cleaver to constantly annoy Moma. Does take a bit of damage. Are they going to dive in there? Actually, Ocelot's going to go for it. There he gets the ulti on Moma, on Enrated, and on Linak. And this doesn't look like such a bad fight. Ulti will go down, though, and that's going to change everything with uh, that 700-something AP. He got two kills in amongst it. Candy Panda's got no mana, has to go out there. Nif will return as well. And look at this Wukong coming <laughs> in for the uh, kill right at the end. Just a little bit too slow. Was so as getting slowed and uh, taking lots of damage as well in there. But they've got super minions. They've got... Uh, the cork in, they've got Wukong plus Mondo hammering away on these turrets and this is going to surely be good games as they start to work on this Nexus. They can pretty much just
folks. Suaz is going to stick in the ulti at the end, but that is 1-0 for against all authority. Great, great, solid play. It was a solid victory, and really, you know, that's the difference between the top teams. You know, when they get advantages, they will just continue to drive it home at them. And we saw it, obviously, straight away. They took that blue buff away.